And how many of you really believe that God will bless you this day, this week, and this year? Amen. I want you to greet someone beside you, maybe with a, with a handshake or with a big hug, and tell that person you'll have a great year. Amen. Are you ready? Something good is going to happen today. Something good is going to happen to me this day. Blessing is my way. You want to sing it to someone beside you? Tell that person. Something good is going to happen to you. This very day. This very day. This very year. And I'd like to welcome all those who have come for the very first time. Can I see a raise of hands? We want to welcome you. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you so much. After the feast, we're going to give you a welcome gift. You go to the lobby, we'll give that gift to you. But thank you for coming. This is now your family. You know, brothers and sisters, today I want you to raise your expectation. I want you to raise your expectation. I want you to believe that God will do something for you today. God is here. Amen? Amen. You need to increase your capacity to receive your blessings. And the way to do that is to raise your expectation. You will not hear a word from me. You will not hear a word from Bo. That's nothing. You will hear a word from God. And when God speaks, something happens. The Word of God is powerful and believe in that. Today, God will speak about how you need to speak the blessing. Everybody say that, speak the blessing. There, are, there is power in your words. You know, when you speak your words, it's not just cheap things. It's not just, you know, oh, I say it and th those are just sounds from my mouth. No, there's power. Everybody say that, power. power. A few days ago, somebody came up to me, a friend of mine. He was going to have a, have, a, have a child, you know. And so he said, Bo, how did you raise up a genius? And I was laughing and he said, you know, Bo, you need to write, your next book should be how, how to Raise Up a Genius Child. And, you know, my son really is a genius. You know, at the age of nine years old, he was writing a blog. Eight years old, writing a monthly column in a magazine. Seven years old, a TV host. Five years old, he had a business. You want to know how to raise up a genius? Ask me how. First, the father has to be a genius. <clears throat> and who's a little bit insane. Just kidding. No, 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 no. The reason why my son is a genius, you know, a book twice this size, he reads in one day. You know why? Again, ask me why. The power of words. The power of words. When he was a baby, smaller, I would tell him, you're, you're a genius. Really. He was still in the womb of my wife. I'd tell him, you're a genius. Now, did it have an effect? I don't know. <laughs> I just wanted to say it. But when he was a little baby, and my wife held his little wrist, and she said, close open, close open. And I saw the baby do that. You know what I told my son? You're a genius! Now, of course, every baby can do that. 
And I don't think other, other fathers said that, but I said that. You're a ge- Every time I meet him, you're a genius, son. You know, I really believe there's... Fa- Tell someone beside you, you're a wonderful person. <laughs> now, here's my belief. If you keep on saying that to your wife, to your husband, to your child, do you think there will be some effect some years down the road? You keep on saying that again and again and again. You're fantastic. You're beautiful. You're phenomenal. You're a terrific person. You're a child of God. You're anointed. You're equipped. Guess what? Will there be some effect? I believe it's a good experiment to start right now. Let's think about it. And I believe we're going to hear the word of the Lord today. Are you expecting a miracle in your life? Are you expecting God to bless you today? Let's pray together in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Everybody say, Today I receive all of God's love for me. Today I open myself to the unbounded, limitless, overflowing abundance of God's universe. Today I open myself to God's blessings, healing, and miracles. Today I open myself to God's Word, so that I become more like Jesus every day. Today I proclaim that I'm God's beloved, I'm God's servant, I'm God's powerful champion, and because I am blessed, I am blessing the world. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. From Mark chapter 4, verse 30, 35, it says, On the evening of that same day, Jesus said to his disciples, Let us go across to the other side of the lake. Can you say those words again? Let us go across to the other side of the lake. Were the disciples, were they the ones who told Jesus, Jesus, let us go across the lake? Were the, were the apostles, in, were they the ones who invited Jesus? Or, or was it Jesus who said, let us go across? Was Jesus the one? He was the one who told them to go? I find that funny. Ask me why. Because it says here, so they left the crowd, the disciples got into the boat in which Jesus was already sitting, and they took him with them. Other boats were there too. Suddenly a strong wind blew up, and the waves began to spill over into the boat. Whose idea was it to go to the lake? You answer me, please. It was Jesus' idea. Now, I thought, I thought that if you have the guidance of God, if you have a... How many of you are making a decision this year? Are you making some decision this year? Thank you so much. You want the guidance of God? You be careful. Because when God guides you, I thought that if God guides you, He kind of like makes you avoid the storm, avoid the problem, avoid the difficulty. You know, like, uh, you know what I'm talking about? But it says here that it was His idea that the apostles go to the lake and when they went to the lake, they meet a... Woo! Lord, why? I'll tell you why. Because some storms are good for you because some storms shake you and when you are shaken it is good because when you are shaken your pride goes away and friends it says here it says here the apostles uh, this is this is fun it says here the disciples woke him up and said teacher don't you care that we are about to die these are seasoned fishermen they've gone through the fiercest storms you know what I'm talking about? They've gone through the storms, they've, they've experienced all, and yet they were so afraid. When God shakes you, when God allows a storm to shake you, it is so good because your pride is gone. And when your pride is gone, you are open to receive the blessing of God. How many of you experienced that? When you went through a storm, you were shaken, your pride was gone. And it is a good thing. Everybody say, it's a good thing. And here's another thing. It says here, and this, this, this I love, suddenly the strong wind blew and the waves began to spill over the boat. Jesus was in the back of the boat sleeping with his head on the pillow. 
I love that. The disciples woke up, woke him up, and then Jesus stood up and commanded the wind, "Be quiet!" And he said to the waves, "Be still." Oh, it's wonderful, friends. Let me say something. Are you listening to me? Your inner world will always manifest to your outer world. And there may be many storms in your life right now. On the outside, it's okay if within you there is no storm, because between the outer storm and the inner storm, the most intense storm is the inner storm. Are you listening to me? You may have debts on the outside. You may have problems in your relationships on the outside. You've got problems with your kids. You may have problems with your job. But if deep within you you have a calm, you have a trust in God, it's okay because a day will come when your inner world will manifest in your outer world. The peace that Jesus had while his head was on the pillow came out, and he said, "Be quiet," and it was quiet on the outside. Everybody say, "I trust in God." Have peace, because when he spoke the word, he said, "Be quiet." The, the inner stillness, the calmness, the peace that was within him—it just came out through his word, through his word. And today, God is going to speak to you and teach you and train you on how to speak the blessings. That when you speak, there is power. Put your hand over your chest. Everybody, say, "Father." I believe that this day you will bless me. You will teach me. You will anoint my tongue to speak the good, to speak the blessing. Teach me, Lord. Hold my hand this day, and I expect for a miracle. In Jesus' name. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Give the Lord a big hand and love Him. Let's be seated, everybody. Touch someone beside you. Tell that person God will speak to you today. Welcome to the feast. Welcome to the happiest place on earth. My big message for you today, God's big message for you today, is this: Are you ready? Say, I'm ready. Change your world by changing your words. Your words. Your words. Everybody say words. words. You know, I. A lot of people, really, after my talk, they come up to me, tears in their eyes. Brother boy, I want to change my life. You know, I'm praying already. I'm, I'm reading the Bible already. I'm, I'm, I'm going to mass. I'm, I'm. What, what else can I do? What else can I do? I tell them, change your words. Change your words. Because if you change your words, you change your life. If you change your vocabulary, you change and become extraordinary. I, I, I believe that many people live a mediocre life because they use a mediocre vocabulary. They use mediocre words. They live a terrible life because they speak in a terrible way. Everybody say, speak the blessings. I'll, I'll tell you a story. May I? Okay, I want you to imagine a man going into a restaurant. He finds a table, he finds a chair, sits down. The waiter comes with a little notepad. Sir, what is your order? And the man says, I want you to give me a plate of rotten, smelly, stinky spaghetti with lots of worms crawling around it. I want you to give me a bowl of rancid soup with a few flies. No, no, make it many flies. Doing a backstroke, not, 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 not freestyle, not butterfly, not breaststroke, backstroke. I want you to give me a glass of water from the toilet bowl 
with UFOs, unidentified floating objects in it. And so the, the waiter is scratching his head and said, Sir, are you, are you serious? And the man shouts and he says, Yes, that's what I want. And so the, the, the waiter, you know, shaking his head, walking into the kitchen, and then, you know, after a few minutes, not, not really few because it, it takes a long time to gather all that, <laughs> and he comes out with a tray. And, and he puts it on the table and he puts the plate with a smelly, stinky, rotten spaghetti with maggots crawling and you don't know if it's a worm or it's a noodle. You it's just, just all... And, and there's a bowl of rancid soup with flies doing the backstroke. And then there's a glass of, of, of water from the toilet bowl with the unidentified floating objects and... And you know, the man looked at all that in front of his table and he said, Yuck! And the waiter said, But sir, that's what you ordered. Can everybody say that? That's what you ordered. You want to you wanna know why I told you that story? Are you ready for this? This is going to shock you. You hold your seats because you might fall on the floor. Are you ready? Yes. Are you sure you're ready? Yes. Tell someone beside you, this is going to shock you. I mean, I'm, I'm, you've got war I'm, I'm warning you. Are you ready? Yes. Life is a big restaurant. You are the customer. The universe is the waiter. And God's creation is waiting for you to order. And you order through your words. And sometimes we order terrible things, like a, like a plate of rotten, slimy, stinky spaghetti and you order a bowl of rancid soup, and you order a glass of water from the toilet bowl. Brother Bo, how in the world do I do that? Oh, when you and I, when sometimes, you know, we, we talk negative. We, we say, I'm an, I'm, a, I'm an unsuccessful person, and I will always be unsuccessful, and I'm poor, and I, I will always be poor, and I'm, I'm a terrible husband, I'm, I'm a terrible father, and, you know... Kawawa naman yung mga anak ko sa akin. And you know, I'm really like this. And my mother died of cancer. And my grandmother died of cancer. And well, I will die of cancer also. And you know, I... Uh, oh, this year, uh, the economy is so bad. My gosh. And, and yeah, my, my life is so bad. And this year, you know what will happen this year? the same bad things that happened last year. And, you know, we like saying the negative stuff. And you know what? We prophesy. We're prophets. We, we declare that. How many of you know of complaining people? Do you know of complaining people? They complain from beginning to end, from the morning until the evening. All they do is complain. Are you familiar with people like that? You know them? You see them every day? Condolence. It's difficult to be with people like that. But here, listen to me. Complainers will get more of what they complain about. Did you get me? When you talk about your problems and you keep on talking about your problems and you analyze your problem and you tell stories about your problem and you explain your problem. I mean, it's good to share when you've got a problem. But if you keep on, if that's the only thing that you do, guess what? You're ordering from the universe larger portions of your problem. Because that's all you say and that's all you do and that's all you think about. Last week, I was going through work and I was having some problems. 
my usual problems at work. Nothing big, nothing extraordinary, but, but they came in droves. It's like these little problems that, you know, oh, little problem, oh, another little problem, oh, another little problem, and another little problem, and, and like waves. I was getting discouraged. I was getting, uh, and it's okay to get discouraged. Tell someone beside you, it's, it's okay. It, you know, when you, when you feel bad, when you feel down, it's okay. We're human beings. And you can allow yourself to feel this. I was allowing myself to feel discouraged. But then I knew a time will come when I say, I snap out of it. I say, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I could have said, oh my gosh, I've got so many problems. Oh gosh, you know. What I did at a certain point, I stood up and I began to say, Lord, I believe that these problems are growth opportunities. I believe that these burdens are blessings in disguise. I believe that these trials are treasures in camouflage. I believe. And Lord, all things will work for good to those who love you. And I believe these problems will work for good to those who love me. What was meant for my harm is now becoming a benefit for me. I believe. You know when you say that? Everybody say that. When you say that, something happens. Something happens in you. You begin to have hope. And you begin to have faith. And I began to attack the problem with faith and with hope. The heaviness lifted up from my shoulders. Are you listening to me? It's a joy when, I, when, when you think. There, there, your words have two kinds of powers. How many? Two. two. The first thing is that your words have power over you. Say over you. Over me. And your words, number two, your words have power over the world. Yeah. Over you. That, that's very... You know, it was Jim Rohn who said this. He said, You have no control over the direction of the wind, but you have control over the direction of your sails. Imagine... Imagine this. Imagine a sailboat. And the sailboat is moving towards that direction. The sailboat wants to go there. That is the place of happiness. That is the place of contentment. That's the place of fulfillment. It's going there. Now, if the wind, if the wind is going also in that direction, is there a problem? Answer me. No, it's okay. The, the wind, and how many of you experience that when everything is just right? And, and, you know, everything falls into place. All the people that you want to talk to is there. You call up and he's there. And, you know, you, you got me? You know, things fall into place. That's wonderful. But how many have experienced that? You want to go there, but the wind is going in the opposite direction. Circumstances that you want to happen do not happen, and then you've got problems. Are you, are you, are you with me? Are you experience, have you experienced that? Can you control the wind? Can you control the circumstances? Many times we can't. You cannot control the economy. Yes? You cannot control the love life of our president. You cannot control what Chris Aquino is thinking in her mind. You cannot control your mother-in-law. You cannot control... Wives, I have to make this announcement. You cannot control your husband. As much as you think you can and you're deceived and you are hallucinating that you can, no, you can't. There are circumstances that you cannot control. But listen to me. You can control your sails. I did some research on sailboats a few days ago, and this is what I found out. This shocked me. This shocked me. I didn't know that a sailboat can sail against the wind. You don't look shocked. <laughs> can you pretend to be a little bit shocked? Because it shocked me. See, I was reading that in the computer. I was researching on sailboats. And I, what? How can the wind is going that way and the sailboat, by some maneuver, can go this way? You know how they do it? Ask me how. By the maneuver called tacking. I have no idea how they do it, but this is how they do it. They adjust the sails. And when they adjust the sail, this is how they do it. They go in a zigzag motion. They use the same wind that's going against them. And when they adjust the sails, 
Say, adjust the sails. In a zigzag way, they're able to go against the wind. Your circumstances may be going against you. You've got financial problems left and right. You've got problems in your job. You've got problems with your mother-in-law. You've got problems with your kids. You've, it's going against you. Guess what? With the adjustment of your sales, with the adjustment of your words, which are your sales, you can go against. And you've got a choice. You can use your words to describe the situation or you can use your words to direct the situation. Last night, my wife, uh, I was giving a seminar, an entrepreneurship seminar yesterday, the whole day, early morning until late evening. I came home and my wife saw me and she said, Bo, you look tired. And I said, yeah, I'm exhausted, you know. But of course, I had to prepare for this message, pray and so on last night. And, and I woke up early in the morning, four in the morning. You know, when I woke up, have you, how, how many of you had these days when you wake up, you feel exhausted? <laughs> You're supposed to feel fresh, but you, I, I felt exhausted this morning. I said, oh, gosh, oh, oh, Lord, oh, wow. And I could have continued feeling, oh, oh. I'm tired. I'm tired. Lord, I'm really exhausted. Lord, I am exhausted. Lord, I am tired. I could have continued describing the situation. You know what I did? Ask me what? I directed the situation with my words. I stood up and I said, I'm getting stronger and stronger. I'm getting healthier and healthier. So the strength of God is flowing through my body, the power of God. I just kept on, kept on. Did I feel that? No. <laughs> I still felt weak and tired. But, you know, I stood up. I said, I'm strong. I'm getting stronger and stronger. You know, after a few minutes, guess what? Guess what? Oh, I felt strong and I felt... And today, stand before you, I could go on for the next few hours. I mean, really. You know, it's... Simple example, simple example, but I'm telling you, your words have power over you. I, I gave this exact same talk some time back. Someone came up to me and he said, Brother Bo, with all due respect, I don't believe in your, you know, the power of words and stuff. Nah. You know, words are things that we say, we forget. I, I, I'm sorry, Brother Bo, I, I really, I'm, called me a skeptic, but... I don't believe in this voodoo stuff of, you know, saying words and the effect. And so I told him, hey, you're a perfect volunteer for an experiment I have. Oh, what is that? I will pay you 10,000 pesos if you take this experiment. What, what experiment? For the next 10 days, 10 times a day, I want you to say something for the next 10 days. What is that? You say this with a lot of emotion, with a lot of conviction, out loud, say, I have terminal cancer. <laughs> 10 times a day, for the next 10 days, I will pay you 10,000 pesos. You know, he looked at me and he said, I'm busy. I've, I'm busy. You know why he didn't take the offer? And I don't think anyone can take the offer. Because deep down within you, you believe somehow that your words have power over you. Am I right? You, you do. And you need to be careful with what you say. You, you have to. It's, it's so important. And when you... So that's number one. Words have power over you. But here's number two. Words have power over your world. Now, you know how? You know how? How in the world will, will your words have power over the world? Ask me how. I don't know. <laughs> really, I don't know. I don't know, but I know that it happens. I don't know why sales if you change the sales in the long run, say in the long run, it changes the direction of the wind. I don't know how, but it happens. 
In Psalms chapter 33, verse 6, it says, The Lord created the heavens by His command, the sun, the moon, the stars, by His spoken word. By His spoken word. And that same power He gives to us, by our words, we can recreate our world. And it's, it's, it's a mystery for me. Many, many years ago, not, not many years ago, just uh, last year, I was uh, in a, in a, taking a vacation with my family and we were in the beach and enjoying myself. But early in the morning, a staff of mine called me up and she was frantic and she described to me a signal number five storm in one of my businesses. And she was basically telling me it's the end of the world for that business. It was all over. I was listening to her and I said, oh my gosh. You know, I worked hard for that business for one year and it's now gone, you know. And I, I, was, I was feeling so discouraged, gripping my heart was fear. And I closed the phone and I said, Lord, thank you for that business, you know, but it's all gone now. And it was a huge problem, really huge. I, I can't go through the details, but... But then all of a sudden I remembered the power of speaking. And so I said, even if I don't feel like it, I'm going to say it. Lord, I claim victory over my business. Lord, I claim that I will, that this business will overcome and survive this, this problem and not only survive it but thrive and flourish and Lord a day will come I will no longer chase after customers customers will come chasing after me the customers will be begging that I serve them through this business in Jesus name now did I feel what I was saying no <laughs> no not at all I wanted to say Lord why <laughs> that's what I wanted to say but I, 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 I said some words of faith. When I came back from the vacation, I attacked the problem with faith and hope in my heart. One year later, that business is not only growing strong, it is now two times bigger than when it went through that problem. And Brother Bo, aren't you being unrealistic about this whole speaking you know let's say you don't really feel well you know let's say you're really sick what am I gonna do what, what will I say I'm not sick I'm not sick I'm not sick I'm not sick no 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 you don't deny that you've got a problem you know you you're sick so you're sick but you can say something like this God's healing is flowing into my body and you claim it I am getting better and better in Jesus name you know you say it when you're poor you know, don't just, you know, I've been helping the poor for what, 30 plus years. And when I talk to them, my gosh, every time they open their mouth, I'm poor. I'm just poor. I come from a poor family. And this is my poor background. You know, it's so difficult to remove that identity from them. And so I teach them, when you are poor, don't say you are poor. When you have no money, don't say you, you have no money. Say something like, I'm, I'm just temporarily broke. And... <laughs> And just say, I'm, I'm, instead of saying, I'm poor, say, I'm, I'm getting ready to become rich, you know? I'm, I'm preparing myself to become rich. You, you focus on, but Brother Bo, here's the question. Isn't that unrealistic? The worst advice, sometimes, the worst advice, now, not always, but sometimes, the worst advice that you can give people is be realistic. If somebody told the Wright brothers, be realistic, then you would not be able to ride planes and not be able to go to Beijing for 1,999 pesos. If somebody told Thomas Edison, be realistic, you would not be able to enter a room, flick a switch, and turn night into day in that room. You listening to me? 
If somebody told Sergey Brin and Larry Page, be realistic, then you would not be able to go to a computer and write a word and Google it, and, um, and out comes 492 million results in 0.5 seconds. The reason why there's a feast here in the Philippine International Convention Center, one of the best venues in all of Asia, is because I was not realistic. And the reason why, the reason why I have a dream and you share it with me that there will be 1,000 feasts just like this all over the world is because I'm not listening to advice from people telling me, be realistic, 1,000 is too much a number, you got to be kidding me, how can you have 1,000 of these things? And I, I'm not listening to that. I am being unrealistic. Ask me why. You've got a choice. When you have a problem, you can talk about that problem or you can talk about the purpose. And here's my belief. If you talk about the purpose and if you focus on the purpose and if you pursue the purpose, you solve a lot of your problems. Do not dwell on your difficulties. You dwell on your dreams. Always, 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 always. Believe in that. There is a verse in the Bible. I don't even have to open the Bible anymore because you know that verse. It's in Joel chapter 3, verse 10, and it says, what does it say? <laughs> it says, let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, you know, let the weak say, I am strong. Friends, it's amazing. The Bible did not say, let the weak say to be weak and, and talk about your weakness and analyze your weakness and explain your weakness and you know, show the different kinds of weaknesses that you have and, and keep on talking about your weakness from beginning to end. No, no, the Bible says, let the weak say, I am strong. Think about Think about, you know, what we're going to do today. We're going to do something very special today. I'm going to teach you how to speak right. Can you, can, I, can, I see, can, can you stand up for a while? We're going to pray. We're going to come before the Lord. And are you ready to change your life? Are you ready to open your life to the avalanche of blessings? Last night, at the end of the seminar, a young woman came up to me. She said to me, words that warmed my heart so much I wanted to cry I don't know if she's here but she told me you know brother Bo my whole family reads your material my father my mother you know and my f I'm, I'm so happy because my family is changing and and she told me this around the table whenever we eat as a family we now speak positively. And I was so happy because this family is being changed. And you know why they're changing? Because they're changing their words. Before, whenever they gathered around the table, they would criticize, they would complain, they would talk against, you know, this and that. But now, it's positive. It's talking about the blessings of God and, and you got what I'm saying? That family will change because their words are changing. Change your words and you change your world. We're going to speak seven proclamations today and I want you to speak in faith. I want you to remember some of the words. You don't even have to say it exactly this way but you know when you go home every morning before you sleep during the day speak blessing. Speak it. Proclaim it. Believe it. Are you ready? Let's do it together. Number one, bless your entire life. Say that with me. Say it with conviction. I am God's beloved and it is great happiness to bless me. I'm anointed by God to serve and bless the world. God's river of blessings is flowing to me at every moment of my life. Everything I need comes to me. I'm a blessing magnet. I'm guided by God at every moment. Do I hear an amen? Do you believe in that? 
Number two, bless your body. Those of you who are not feeling too well, those of you who are sick in any way, I want you to say this with conviction, with faith. Are you ready? Say, I'm getting better and stronger every day. God's power of health and healing are flowing through my body, my mind, and my spirit. With long life, I will serve the Lord in Jesus' name. Amen. Be healed, brothers and sisters. Receive the healing of God. Receive the healing of God in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Number three, you're praying for a loved one. You're praying for a son, a husband, a parent, a friend, a cousin, a neighbor. Say this after me. My loved one is growing closer to God. Deep inside, the Holy Spirit is busy working changing and transforming this person this child of God is set free from all addictions God's purpose will be fulfilled in this person's life I declare that as far and my household we will serve the Lord in Jesus name you believe in that you keep on saying that you keep on believing number four let's pray for our families our relationships God is blessing my relationships. Love is increasing. Service for one another is growing. Forgiveness, humility, understanding flow like a river in my relationships. Old wounds are being healed. Bonds between us are getting stronger and deeper in Jesus' name. Number five, let's pray for our decisions. Some of you are making decisions this year. Say that with me. The steps of the good person are ordered by the Lord. God directs my steps. God helps me to distinguish what is right from wrong. God shows me the paths to abundance in Jesus' name. Number six, let's pray for some of your problems. Are you ready? All things will work for good to those who love God. This difficulty that I face now shall bless me in a very big way. What was intended for my harm, God will transform and turn into my benefit in Jesus' name. How many of you are praying for your finances, for your jobs, for your businesses? We're praying that God bless you. Say that with me. I'm rich and getting richer. I'm generous and getting more generous. God's abundance is supplying my every need. Money is flowing to me in great abundance. I can earn any amount of money I choose. Everything I touch prospers and succeeds. New doors will open before me. The right people will walk into my life. God will prosper the work of my hands. And as I use my core gifts to serve others, I will be richly rewarded in Jesus' name. Amen. If you believe that, that what you have spoken will come true, if you believe that you have the power of a prophet, that your words create the future, your words direct your life, then I want you to thank God with me. Just thank Him right now. Say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you Father. You know, I, I always say this, there will be 1,000 feasts in the world. There will be 1,000 feasts in the world. You know, every time I say it, I believe something happens. I get convinced. You get convinced. You say, yes, I'll, I'll help Brother Bo make it happen. I'm going to be, I'm going to build, I'm going to help build a feast one day. I'll tell you what happened last Friday. Last Friday, there's a feast in SM Manila. You know that? Led by Brother Obed Cabrillas. It had only one session. We have two sessions here, right? In SM Manila, it's only one session. There were 800 people. Last Friday, he opened a second session. And 400 young people were worshiping the Lord in that second session. Same Friday, exactly on the same day, our dear friend Alvin Barcelona in Marilao opened a new feast right beside SM Marilao. 500 people gather there in the new feast in Marilao. It's happening. Miracles are happening. 
I want you to believe. I want you to believe. Some of you have your novenas to God's love where you listed down your dreams. I want you to take them. And I want you to believe. Some of you don't have this yet. It's fine. I want you to lift up your dreams. I'll say it again. Do not just talk about your problems. Talk about your purpose. Do not dwell on your difficulties. Dwell on your dreams. Because when you do that, you solve many of your dreams, of your difficulties, and you solve many of your problems. And say this after me, Jesus, I believe that you will fulfill the dreams that you have planted in my heart. In Jesus' name, all the resources that I need, I receive today. Amen. Hallelujah. God is here. God is in our midst. God is in our midst. Hallelujah. We're going to pray. We're going to sing. We're going to come before the Lord. Because of your grace and love that flows down, I can boldly speak blessings over my life. Amen. I declare in faith that today is the beginning of greater things for me. Amen. That doors of opportunity are opening up in my life. Yes. I claim that this year will be a year of increase. 
a year of promotion, a year where I will walk in greater health. This will be the year where I will break bad habits, where I will be set free from addiction and break free from everything that is holding me back. I proclaim in Jesus' name that I am drenched in abundance, that I have and will continue to receive overflow. Hallelujah. I am blessed and I will be blessed even more. In Jesus' name.